Hello everyone and welcome back to J1 Aviation. So today I was just going to give a little cockpit tour here of our Piper Cherokee 140. So let's start with this group of instruments which is directly in front of the pilot. So there's six instruments here which are sometimes referred to as the six pack and these are your basic flight instruments. So the first one here we have is the airspeed indicator. This one measures speed and how this one works is that it doesn't use the electrical system or anything, but it works off the pitot tube and the static ports. So it measures the differential pressure between the two. It has knots and miles per hour on this one, and it has different color-coded bands to show you the different speed ranges you'll be operating in. And then just to the right of that, we have the attitude indicator. And this one is a gyro instrument. So it has a spinning gyro inside of it, which is vacuum powered. So if we lose our vacuum system, this is one of the instruments which we'll lose. So it's driven off the engine driven vacuum pump. So we need the engine running in order for this instrument to work. This one measures pitch and bank and basically shows you which way is up. So next to that, we have the altimeter. This one measures your altitude above sea level. So it has a little hand and a big hand. The little hand measures thousands and the big hand measures hundreds. So this works directly off the static port. The ambient air pressure outside comes through the static lines to the altimeter, and then it will give us an altitude. So if we go down and to the left, we'll see the turn coordinator. So the turn coordinator measures bank angle to an extent and coordination. So basically what it's measuring is when you're flying or when you're turning, is your tail behind the nose or is it kind of off to the side? So this one also is a gyro instrument, but it's electric. So it comes on with the master switch and it's like a backup instrument. So it will still work if you lose the engine driven vacuum pump, but you still need to have electrical power for this one to work. So the next to that is the heading indicator. Now this is another gyro instrument which operates off the engine driven vacuum pump. So if that pump fails, this will freeze in place. So it lets you know what heading you are flying. And we want to keep this one calibrated to the magnetic compass, which you can see between the windshield. So then next to that is the BSI or vertical speed indicator. Basically, this one just measures how fast you are climbing or descending. So it works entirely off the static port and it measures the rate of change as you climb or descend. So those are the primary flight instruments basically set up the same in a lot of training aircraft. Now back to the top. Here we have some approach indicator lights. So for VFR flight, like we're doing, we're not really using these. To the right is our CDI, our course deviation indicator. So this is for navigation and it works in conjunction with nav one. And this can be used for some instrument approaches like ILS, or it can be used to navigate to a nav aid like a VOR. So right under that is another CDI. And then this one works in conjunction with nav two. So you can have one looking at one nav aid and the second one looking at another, another. So both of these are electrical driven and they work when the master switch and the avionics master are turned on. So now let's look at the radios, which are just to the right of that. So at the top, we have the audio panel, right? This lets us control which radio um, we want to communicate and that we want to receive on. So under that, we have the number one navcom and then we have the number two navcom beside that. Under the navcoms, we have like a basic GPS. So this lets us look up different airports, waypoints, things like that, and lets us navigate to them. Under that, we have the transponder. This lets ATC know where we are. So when we're talking to them, they can give us a code, we can enter it, and it's tied to, to the static system. So ATC knows the altitude we are flying at. There's a little switch on here, which kind of controls the output, right? So when it's on, ATC can see the code. When we switch it to altimeter or altitude, ATC can read our altitude. And then we have an ident button on here, which will draw ATC's attention to us if they ask us to identify. And then you can see in front of the passenger seat, we don't really have too many instruments, but there are a few. We have the avionics master, so flipping this switch on will provide power to the instruments. Also, we have a few little placards here with just general frequency and transponder reminders. 
And then, you know, most important, we have the panic button. So if all else fails, you know, I'm going to press this button and hope for the best. Just kidding. So that's just like a little sticker on there. And then to the far right is the suction gauge, right? So this measures the vacuum for the gyro powered instruments, right? It measures how much suction is being pulled by the system. So then now let's look at the bottom and then we'll work our way back to the left. So we have some controls here for blowing air and heat and these are vents for us and for the windscreen and then under that is all the circuit breakers so if any blow of course it would pop out and the general rule of thumb is to reset it only once in flight left of that is the ammeter which shows the alternator output so we'll know if the alternator is still good and it's still outputting a charge then Beside that, we have the carb heat, right? So turning this on will send some warm air into the carb to keep the ice from forming or to melt it if it's already formed. Then, of course, we have the throttle here, the gas pedal, if you will, and the mixture, which controls how much fuel we feed to the engine. So to shut the engine down at the end of the flight, we'll just pull it all the way back. It'll cut off the fuel and the engine will shut off. So above that, we have some switches. So the red one is the master switch. It has two sides one for the alternator and one for the battery. So to turn the left half, we are just running off the battery. And then when the right side is also flipped, we're also running off the alternator as well. So then we have the electrical fuel pump. Basically, this is a backup to the engine driven fuel pump. So the engine driven fuel pump will always be running when the engine is running, but we'll also turn on this backup electrical fuel pump during critical phases of flight, such as takeoff or landing. Next to that is the landing light, then the strobes, beacon, pitot heat switch, and instrument lighting. And then left of the throttle quadrant, we have the primer. And it can be used to help start the engine, right? So you can pump this a little bit and it sends some fuel directly into the intake. Then we have the tachometer and it of course shows RPMs. Next to that is the EGT for the exhaust gas temperature. Then the ignition, where the key goes to engage a starter for the aircraft. And then left of that is the Hobbs meter, which is like a clock for time running on the aircraft engine. And then I think about lastly above that, we have five gauges here, right? So left and the right gauges are the fuel tank gauges for the left and the right tank. So the second to the left is the oil temperature. The middle one is the fuel pressure, and of course, then to the right of that is the oil pressure gauge. So of course, we like to see all of these in the green. And then coming way back to the left, uh, we have an AV20. So this is a little display, which provide, provides a variety of flight information. So I don't really play with it too much. It can be used as like a backup attitude display. I believe it has a angle of attack display, maybe a G meter, a couple little handy features and a clock. So it's got some nice pieces to it. Then under that, we have an instrument with a light for stall recognition, right? So the first here is a stall horn. So when you get close to a stall, you'll hear the horn. And then in addition to that, there's a light, which can also alert the pilot that you are approaching a stall. So that's really about it. You see, it's not too complicated. So most older aircraft have a very similar setup, you know, whether it's Piper or Cessna. Some instruments may vary. The layout might vary a little bit, but the general idea is still the same. So there you go. Thanks everyone for watching today. We'll hope you join us on a future flight and thanks for flying J1 Aviation.